Good afternoon, everybody. It's Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. It's Monday. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We definitely did here in Connecticut. Um, it's getting cold and I love it. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I posted a picture of our front door and we put the little tiny pumpkins on top. And uh, when I built this house, I said, I've got to have a ledge on the door because I've got to put pumpkins up because it, it's a New England tradition, right? All right, there I am live. I'm going to catch this link and send it over to my text group people. And there we go. And if you think anybody would enjoy my tutorials, my videos, Feel free to scatter it about, right? I wrote that out with my my big giant pencil that I love to use. So what I wanted to show <clears throat> um, you guys is an actual pro project I'm doing for, for my home, for myself. And I collect these old crazy toolboxes. I love them. I have them everywhere. And I've got really big, huge ones. And one of them I did over in milk paint, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I love them. And I just love how they were made for very unique, you know, this is definitely the worker, the carpenter made this for himself. It's got these little compartments, this. It's got kind of these, oh, let's see if I can get it, these slices down here. This does not move. It's at an angle, and that was probably for pulling something up. And I just love it. So I don't want to do a lot to this. I'm not going to um, paint it. But I did want to put on a little phrase here. And um, I did this before I, I came live today, among some other things. And I wanted to show you how I do this. Because sometimes, you know, the old wood is really nice. It wasn't finished with anything. It's just this old, dirty wood that I absolutely love. And this, it says, best laid plans. Hey, Barb, happy Monday. Good to see you. How is it out there? It is, now it's sunny and um, it's just beautiful. It's like you go out in the sun and it's warm. You're in the shade and it's chilly. I just love this. And the leaves are starting to turn here. Um, so this, this is a, a part of a quote from one of my favorite poems, To a Mouse by Robert Burns. And he was a Scottish poet, 18th century and I love this poem. It's hot there? Is it really? Wow. It's crazy, right? The weather's just been crazy. Um, but Robert Burns was a Scottish po a poet. And if I didn't, when I was living out in California, if I didn't live next to an English teacher, I never would have known about this poem. I lived out in San Anselmo in Marin County. And we lived in this crazy 19, like late 60s house that had never been updated. It was all original. It was very cool. And next door was George and his wife. And I think her name was Veronica. And they must have been in their mid to late 70s. And he would walk his dog, Robbie. And I'm like, oh, and his dog was so sweet. And he was old in, you know, California, those steep hills. And I said to him one day, well, why did you name your dog Robbie? And he says, after Robert Burns. And he loved Robert Burns. And, and George was an English teacher. So we talked about, for some reason, to a mouse came up. You know, the best laid plans of mice and men. And we just talked about it all the time. Cause, and I just love it. And it's put, and Barbara's saying it's supposed to start cooling down later this week. Well, I guess if you like the heat, Barb, enjoy it, right? Get out there and soak up the, the heat and the sun. So I encourage you that 
when you're doing something like this or a sign, anything, you do, it doesn't have to be the typical stuff we say, right? Um, it could be a quote from a poem, a quote from a favorite film, right? Anything that you want at all, you can put on anything, on like a piece of wood, anything you want. And, and I really encourage you to do that. Have fun with it. Maybe you have a favorite novel that you just love and you love um, a saying in it or the title or, you know, I have a friend who loves The Great Gatsby and they could quote the, you know, the whole book. So why not do that, right? Or it could be, you know, a popular film, something new, you know, what is that GOG Game of Thrones, right? Whatever you want to do, you can do. It doesn't have to be gather or family, which those are fine too. Um, but you can have fun with it. You can you can have you know um, let your sense of humor come through because it's your home and it's your rules. So I encourage you to do that, and that's what I do. Another one I love, and I have this giant, giant piece of um, antique siding with the original paint, and I want to put a Shakespeare quote on it. Hell is empty and all the devils are here. I just love that. So that's that'll be another project. I don't know how I'm ever going to get that under a camera, though. So how I did this is I went to Canva, and you guys, you could get a, if you don't know what Canva is, it's C-A-N-V-A, go, hey Amanda, happy Monday, oh I love that sound, the uh, sunflower, um, but Canva is great, you could have a free account, and you can go there, and you just measure, I don't have my ruler, but you measure the dimensions of where you want to put, you know, your quote, or your saying, or whatever, and if you click on, you know, make up custom dimensions or custom size, put in your, you know, inches and it will come up with a blank shape and then you can just scroll through all the different fonts. This is um, Byron. It's called Byron for Lord, I guess Lord Byron. <clears throat> and then you just, you know, type out what you want, print it up. I had to print mine up on three pieces of paper because it was too big for just one. And then all I do is, now I eyeballed this, I eyeball everything, but if you're uncomfortable doing that, what I would tell you to do is you see how I'm kind of pressing this down, and then you would get your ruler, and you would measure it from this side, this side, the top, right, with all these, like the high points here, right, this one is a little bit higher, so mine kind of slightly goes down, you can't notice it, but you, if you really want it to be square, then you would also measure, you know, from the A's here to make sure, you know, they're the same distance from the bottom. Then I tape it down, <clears throat> and this is a Sorrel paper I use. I love this. A roll of this will last you forever. I cannot find my white. If um, if I had to recommend a color, I would tell you when you're doing something on a dark ground to use the white so you can see it. But I already cut off my piece. But you, it comes on a big roll. It's really inexpensive. And you just take it like this, pop it under, right? And again, if you're nervous about this sliding around, you could tape it down, right? Cut your Sorrel paper and tape everything down. I like to play it, you know, I, I'm very risky. <laughs> I didn't do that. Then all you do, right, and I have a very, this is a, this is a crazy pencil I got when I was in Italy. It's so cool. I have a whole bunch of them. I went crazy in Italy with all the paint. But look at the lead. It's so great. But um, choose something kind of big like this. 
because the wood, especially on this surface, the wood is kind of rough and you wanna really make sure it, it lays down a nice line. And then once you do that, right? Actually, I'll show you on the other side. Do you guys collect anything like this, Barb or Amanda? Every time I go to a tag sale, or good, I find these at Goodwill, I pick these up, I'm like, oh my God, I have to have that toolbox. All right, hopefully my tape is gonna stick. You slip this under. And I'm a lefty, so I start over from the right and go this way. So I'm not dragging, which I'm already doing that. But hey, Danielle, how are you today? But I kind of start this way, so I'm not dragging the lead. And I just, you have to, you have, to have a plan. You can't kind of go randomly all over. I started with the top, and then I went to the bottom. So I just kind of went around. And this font is, is, you know, like old fountain pen script. Or not even fountain pen. What's the other pen before fountain pen? Yeah, that is a fountain pen. But anyway, you do this. But it's all kind of wiggly and rough, so it's perfect for this kind of thing. And then I just go along the bottom of the script. And if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette and you've taken it out of the box, unlike me, I have a Silhouette and I'm so intimidated by that thing that I haven't done that. But you can very easily just cut out a stencil. But I kind of like this. I mean, it's really fast. Faster than me trying to figure out how to use my <laughs> silhouette. <laughs> All right, so you do that. Oh, Amanda's saying, I have one of my grandpa's toolboxes like this. Oh, that's really special, Amanda. It really is. And this is a great idea, absolutely. And you can put like your grandpa's name, maybe something he used to say, or I don't know, a game he liked to play. It, it just could be just so much fun. So that's, you could barely see it. No, actually you could, you could see it, right? With the light hitting that. And then what I did, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Let me tell you, the painting, because I am painting on the raw wood, I, I had to really focus because I don't want to do drips and drops of white paint all over this. But I have a, um, you need a good brush, a decent brush, that's gonna have a little bounce. See how this, it bounce, yeah, see it bounces up. And that's what you want. You don't want one that's gonna kinda just bend and stay that way. And I, of course, am using milk paint. This is Amy Howard at home. This is the Toscana milk paint in, um, I think it's Strasbourg white, but I needed a nice bright white. Mix it up. And then I just dip and I kind of rolled the excess off on my uh, tongue depressor. And again, I go from right to left, and I just paint. And it's a lot of fun. It's not as difficult as you think. Don't have an espresso. Amanda or Danielle or Barb <laughs> before you do this because you don't want your hand to shake. You want to have a nice steady hand 
and um, you just paint. And I went over twice. So I did a second coat, you know, in some areas. And then I actually distressed it because I don't want it to look, you know, fresh and new. I'm actually going to leave this taped now so that when I go to finish it, I don't have to try to line it up. So I'm going to tape this down. So Amanda, what would you do with your grandfather's toolbox? Right? Does he have a favorite color? Or, I don't know. I'm like, I think that's so special. I don't have anything like that. Okay. I'm just taping this down. And then I want to show you how I'm going to finish this box. All right, and some of these boxes, I was on, I was looking at toolboxes. They go for like thousands, some of the toolboxes that you can find. It's incredible. Okay, so let's turn this back over. Barb is laughing, planning on using milk paint for the first time today. Yay! Look, Barb, it's not hard. It is not difficult. But I have to tell you, I had a painting disaster. That's why I decided to do, like, the best laid plans, right? I love that. The poem is about a little mouse who makes a nest. The farmer comes along, wrecks the nest. And I think the farmer was um, Robert Burns. And it's like, I had this idea in my head, Barb, that I was going to do this um, technique that, and this design. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Oh, no, it was awful. Not only was it awful, I made a mess. I made a mess. And I'm, I was just like, I put some music on, I cleaned up my mess, and I'm like, well, I think I'm going to do the best laid plans. Because, you know, everything could go awry. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. Thank you. And Barb, you have to let me know. Let me know in the, in the group how your um, milk painting goes and if you have questions. So with something like this, now I, I might use this on my dining room table. Um, I really want to fill it with my um, the gold leaf leaves and pine cones I made. And then I go out um, and I, I snip off like some hydrangeas, and I just like to fill these up, right? You could get those little pumpkins, you can get um, apples, right? You could throw some apples in and really have fun with these. If you're having people over, maybe you're setting up a buffet, you could put in silverware and napkins and all that kind of stuff. Um, but since I'm going to do that, I want something that's food contact safe. And that means, of course, uh, hemp oil. Amanda's saying, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to think on it. I'll talk with my uncle and see what ideas he had, has. Grandpa passed when I was 16 and my dad passed eight years ago. Oh, So I'm sure my uncle can help me come up with something neat. Absolutely, Amanda, and that's such a, it's a family heirloom. It really is. Something like that is an heirloom, and, you know, when when people that you love pass away, I mean, it's so awful, but it's also so wonderful to have something of theirs that they touched and they used. Um, I just love that. I think it's better than anything. All right, so I'm pouring out some of my hemp oil. And I love, love, love this. And again, the reason I'm using hemp oil and not wax, I wouldn't ever use a poly or anything like that on this, is because it is food contact safe. So say I wash a bunch of apples and fruits and, you know, people want to eat them, they can pull the apple out of here and eat it. They don't have to worry about anything weird being on it. All right. Barb, you're, oh, so you're using a frame for your um, for your milk painting, right, Barb? Yeah. Ooh, that's the best. 
I got I I want to see how that goes. You have to you have to keep us all up to date on how your project goes. All right. Here's the uh, hemp oil, Miss Mustard Seed Hemp Oil, and I've told you, don't worry about the color. The color is determined by when the hemp seeds were harvested, and I'm using just an old, this is the Amy Howard um, Natural Bristle Brush. I love these. I've had mine for years, and then I'm just going to brush it on like this. Make sure your piece is clean. And you can use, say you want to do your lettering in um, chalk paint. This is fine. You can finish um, chalk paint with hemp oil also. Now I'm just going to do this part because I haven't finished painting the back. But what's happening right now is the oil is being absorbed into the wood. And you can actually see... See it. Let me see if I can hold it up. This thing is just thirsty, thirsty. And you can see parts of it are already getting, they look dry, they're not shiny. So I would normally, if I wasn't doing a live, I would let this soak in for about 15 minutes. And then you have to wipe away the excess. This is something you have to do that. If you don't wipe away the excess oil and it's sitting on top, it's going to get sticky. So you just take a lint-free, this is an old cotton um, cloth, and you just wipe away. Amanda's asking, does hemp oil need to be reapplied every few years or so? Um, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I have some furniture pieces that I've finished with hemp oil, and they're fine. I haven't. Um, but like wax, you can. Like my dining room table is wax, so about once a year I put um, a coat of wax on. But remember, if it was done with poly, if it, when the poly starts to chip and crack or, you know, little pieces come off, I can't just apply more poly. I have to refinish the whole top. And that is why I love oils and waxes. My floors, and I say this all the time, are done in tongue oil. I built my house. And all my floors are done in tongue oil because I don't want to, you know, you get that, say I decide, well, it's actually, we're letting them scratch up and do their thing, but they get scratched up in like one area, maybe in the kitchen in front of the sink. I can just clean that and put more tongue oil just on that area. If that was polyurethane, you know, the whole thing, I would have to have my entire house, the floor sanded and repolyurethane, and what a pain in the butt is that? Hey, Shannon, good to see you. You didn't miss everything. Shannon, you know you can um, watch the replay for sure, but I'm showing this old, I'm showing, <laughs> Shannon, I'm gonna, <laughs> let me just go back. I, um, ha I collect, Shannon, these old toolboxes, and I didn't want to paint this one. I thought about painting the whole thing in milk paint. I'm like, but I really love the wood. It's really beautiful. It's dark. It's really charming. Why do I want to paint this, right? But I'm like, I do want to paint one of my favorite quotes on it, Shannon. And it's from the Robert Burns poem, um, To a Mouse or About a Mouse, To a Mouse. And, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men. So I put that out here. And if you go back, Shannon, and watch, oh, you we use Shannon. Don't be sorry. Not at all. I'm so glad to see you. But um, I was encouraging everybody, Shannon, to not just, you know, when you do something like this, maybe you're making a sign, not just to do the typical, you know, gather or family. Have you guys seen that insurance commercial where the guy's trying to stop young people from being like their parents and the woman is saying, you know, no cussing, no, I don't know what. And he takes the sign and throws it out, right? It's like, be original. I know you all have little thoughts and ideas, favorite quotes, maybe, you know, 
from a movie or a show, and it could be contemporary or it could be ancient, that you love. So, so use those. You do not have to do something that you see at Home Goods. And not that Home Goods is bad, but Home Goods signs are made for the masses, right? They're going to pick gather because the most people are going to like that. Not everybody's going to like best laid plans, right? They don't, that's not their thing. And, and what you love makes you unique. And when they, people go into your home and they see your crazy, Shannon, you might have some crazy saying in your kitchen and they're going to love that, right? It's going to be a reflection of you and that's what your home should be, your space. Hey, Royce. Royce is saying, oh, I buy these old tool boxes whenever I see them, love them. Oh, my God. Royce, everybody, it is since I was a kid, and if you've been following me, I always have, like, boxes, like ancient old boxes. I find tiny ones, really huge ones. I've got my um, grand great-grandmother's, like, 18th century blanket chest. I do have that in its original paint. But I love those kinds of things. I love them. We went to, not Sturbridge Village, but we went to um, the Shaker Museum. It's not a museum, it's a farm. Now, I'm, I'm so bad, I forgot. I think it was in Massachusetts. But they were making the band boxes. Have you guys seen those band boxes? They steam the wood. Well, you know, I was I was like a maniac. I'm like, I said to my husband, I have to go to band box camp and learn how they do this. <laughs> Shannon's saying, these are awesome toolboxes. Thank you so much for encouraging unique quotes. Yes. And it might be something, Shannon, that you all you always say. Something you love, something, you know, I don't know, that inspires you, but be, you know, let it be a reflection of you. Oh, Royce. <laughs> oh, man, we should all go up there and learn how to make those, right? And and the, the paint, the milk paint of the furniture and stuff was amazing. So that's all there is today, you guys, because my other thing I was going to do kind of exploded. So I'm going to go. But you know what? You have to experiment. You have to experiment with finishes to see what's going to work, what's not going to work, you know. And um, not every time you try, you know, when you try something for the first time, it's not always going to go well, for sure. Oh, Royce, that's fabulous. Nobody puts baby in the corner. I love that. Now imagine that, right, Royce, on a sign that you have somewhere in your home and people are going to be like, oh yeah, I know where that's coming from. And it's just so wonderful, right? You can even have little kids do that. I've seen, you know, those posts you see on Facebook where the teacher asks the, the, all the kids these questions and they come out with the most hilarious things, I would put that on a sign in a minute, right? So do that, you guys. There's a little assignment. It doesn't even, it could be on a little tiny piece of wood. You just need a little bit of paint. And I'm just using milk paint because, you know, I have to use milk paint on this old wood. And then you can try finishing it with some oil or some wax and have fun with it. You will be surprised at how much fun this is. But but go to Canva. If you don't have an account, just sign up for the free account. Their paid account is really inexpensive. You could do more stuff, but you can easily do this in their free account. So everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, Royce, absolutely. Royce is saying love. Thank you for the inspiration. Absolutely, Royce. It's my pleasure. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday and um, get a little notebook. I also, Royce, I, I have a little design notebook and I write these things down. It's like, oh, that would be a really cool sign or I love that color. I have to use it. So if you guys don't have a little design notebook that you carry around, get one because you might be inspired and, and you don't want to forget that. All right, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy painting, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Take